Hello everyone, my name is Oliver Wasonga. I teach and do research on rangeland management at the University of Nairobi. I will talk briefly about my experience um, on water management among pastoralist communities in Eastern. Water as well as pasture um, in the pastoral areas of Eastern Africa are highly you know, variable both in space and time, and this is owing to the inherent variability uh, in rainfall. Water uh, particularly is a critical resource in pastoral systems, and its distribution and management is key to management of the larger grazing areas and pasture, because optimum use of grazing resources is normally achieved by uh, particularly regulating use of water sources available in these areas. There are various types of water uh, sources, the ponds and pans uh, in which water collect, especially during the wet season. So these are basically seasonal uh, sources. The dams, which are much bigger in capacity than the pans, are perennial uh, sources of water. The wells, especially the deep ones, are perennial uh, sources of water as well. Most rivers in the pastoral areas are actually seasonal, with a few of them being perennial and therefore important for dry season and drought periods. Boils have become a very important source of water during the dry season and, and drought periods, but also in terms of severe scarcity, water has to be tracked into the pastoral areas from other sources through the boozers and the, and the tankers. Traditionally, pastoralists divide their grazing areas into wet dry uh, season grazing area as well as drought reserves and these uh, particular areas have different types of water. Wet season water sources are transient and have to be used at um, that particular time because otherwise they dry soon after the rains uh, stop. The Baran of northern Kenya and southern Ethiopia excavate ponds uh, or pans just before the rains just to ensure there is enough storage for use during the wet season. They also dig a series of wells, um, uh, which are basically, you know, a perennial uh, sources and which are located uh, in areas that are conserved or protected from other uses such as settlement and no tree cutting is allowed in these areas. Uh, there are also strategic boreholes and these boreholes are really uh, jealously, you know, guarded or managed during uh, the uh, the dry season and the palms at times are shut down or physically you know removed from uh, these areas just to ensure that when it rains the herds go back to the wet season grazing areas other sources of water during the dry season and drought periods include the shallow wells that are normally excavated in the dry riverbeds to access water that's stored under the sand deposits. And of course, I've, as I've indicated, there are also mobile sources uh, via the boozer. Water management in pastoral system is well embedded in the traditional system and institutions. There are traditional institutions that regulate water use. And in this case, there are elaborate rules and penalties that are applied. Such institutions also are responsible for conflict resolution and negotiation of intercommunity access to water during times of scarcity. In some areas, you have rangeland users association, but also the traditional institutions that govern uh, both water and, and pasture in the, in, the, in the pastoral areas. Such traditional institutions also define hierarchy of rights of access to, to water. Normally, you'll find water management committees of, uh, for various uh, sources of water, and their role is basically to enforce rules of access. As times of the year, uh, pastoralists have to migrate or move uh, to access water, especially uh, when there's scarcity. And at such times, negotiated access is quite um, key. Uh, to ensuring that this harmonious sharing of resources. The spirit of reciprocity is very, very important also in terms of uh, 
access to water, especially during uh, uh, times when water is scarce. And this is enabled by kinship alliances and social networks that allows uh, harmonious sharing of uh, such critical resources. The puzzle is, as I've already indicated, have uh, uh, separate or different water resources or sources for dwet season and dry season. And this is very important in matching uh, the household requirements with the limited uh, sources that are available in these areas. Rationing of water consumption becomes quite key uh, in cases of severe drought. Yeah, and livestock uh, in this case are only watered after every one to two days. Water management specifically becomes quite critical during the dry and drought periods. And traditionally, livestock would be given preference uh, because they share the same uh, uh, sources uh, with the women who fetch water for domestic use. In some instances, you will find separate uh, points for the women to draw water and uh, also watering traps for livestock, but it's quite rare. As drought advances, normally the management committees develop a roster for livestock watering um, um, in times of scarcity. And an example of the Maasai of Amboseli area in southern Kenya, northern Tanzania, in the dry season, each village, also known as the Manyata, is scheduled to water their livestock and fetch water for domestic use after every one day. And this could go up to two to three you know, uh, days uh, depending on the severity of the drought. Negotiated intercommunity water sharing goes beyond pastoralist territories uh, to cross to uh, cross uh, cross the borders. Uh, for example, um, at the Kenya Uganda border, also known as the you know the Karamoja area, during drought, access to Kobe, Kobebe Dam. Uh, which is located in Moroto district in Uganda, uh, is negotiated by advanced team of elders from various ethnic communities before the others actually move in to use the, the source. The Tapeth, the Mateniko, Moroto, the Gia of Katido from Uganda, and the Turkana of Kenya all converge at this source in October. Water tenure can be very complex in, in the pastoral areas uh, where you have uh, both the private and community property right regimes applying at the same time. There are hierarchy of rights of access. For example, the Borana pastoralists of Northern Kenya and Southern Ethiopia have a series of hierarchy of um, uh, rights of access with the initiator of the well uh, given a first priority uh, this is the individual who initiates the digging of the well and mobilizes resources to ensure the, the construction is complete and it's normally called as uh, a baela or a bakomfi. And the well is normally named after this individual. The second priority is given to the clansmen or the women of the baela. The third right goes to the one in charge of scheduling access, normally uh, appointed by the um, the elders, this is the Abairega. And then the fourth right uh, goes to the larger community. The fifth right goes to the nine tribesmen. Uh, these are non members of the uh, community. And there are also exceptions uh, in the sense that livestock on migration or transit are given priority to drink ahead of others. And of course, the beast of burden, the donkey, can drink anywhere and everywhere. Order for watering livestock also applies to the different livestock species and classes, with the milking cows and calves and the sick and the weak animals given priority. Water resources are shared among the pastoralists, the farmers, the wildlife. And of course, when this happens, conflicts may arise especially, for example, where upstream users over-extract water, leaving less for the downstream users. Such cases have been observed, for example, in Isiolo County, 
where protests and damage of irrigation infrastructure by pastoralists along the Yellow River and Bisanade River uh, uh, in that part of the country uh, uh, has been observed. Water Resource Users Association in some areas uh, has been used uh, to regulate use and also resolve such kind of conflicts when they arise. With respect to sharing water with wildlife, pastoralists are well cognizant of the fact that the wildlife also do need water just as much as livestock, especially during uh, times of scarcity. And so whenever they water their livestock, they leave all the tribes filled with water to serve the livestock and the wildlife, sorry, and to avoid them drowning while trying to access water um, in the wells. Unfortunately, as a form of punishment, the community members that breach the rules also at times are forced to drink with the lions and the hyenas. Some conclusions come through that pastoralists have very strong resource governance systems that should be um, recognized and form the basis of any sort of water management mechanisms put play in place in the pastoral areas. That proper siting or location of water sources is quite key as they have to be uh, located in areas where they don't encourage degradation of critical resources. They also need to consider interest of the main users, uh, and these are the youth, the herders, and the women who are mainly involved in digging the wells, but also the main ones involved in the extraction, either for livestock or domestic use. They also need to provide make proper provisions for domestic and livestock use uh, by, for example, having separate standpipe for women to fetch water and also separate livestock troughs. Solar pumps provides a good alternative to diesel powered ones as a way of lowering cost of maintenance because during the dry season or drought periods, uh, these pumps work every day and it can be a very costly affair for the pastoralist uh, community. Thank you very much. Shukran. Amasegnalo. Asanteni sana.